Dear comrades, on behalf of the Executive Committee of the Communist Party of Great Britain and all British Communists, our delegation brings warm, comradely greetings to the 27th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. The new draft of your program and the guidelines for the economic and social development of your country have attracted world attention. Our delegation has followed with great interest the report of Comrade Gorbachev, the discussions leading up to the Congress and in Congress itself. These have recognized not only the great achievements of socialism in the Soviet Union, but have frankly confronted the problems you face in implementing the far-reaching plans for future advance, including the need for further extension of socialist democracy. The worldwide interest in this Congress is recognition of the decisive importance of the Soviet Union and its Communist Party in helping to resolve the great problems facing humanity. The inspiring peace proposals made on January 15th by Comrade Gorbachev struck a resonant chord in the hearts and minds of hundreds of millions throughout the world. The proposed three-stage program for world nuclear disarmament by the year 2000, accompanied by a further unilateral moratorium on nuclear weapon tests, is in direct contrast to the actions of the United States, its development of the so-called Strategic Defense Initiative, and refusal to join the test moratorium. But this U.S. position has been supported by the British government, which was the first to sign an agreement with the United States on Strategic Defense Initiative research. But the broadly based and powerful peace movement in our country, which demands unilateral action by Britain to renounce nuclear weapons and remove cruise missiles from our country, reflects the views of millions when it opposes Reagan's acceleration of the arms race and urges a positive response from the British government to the Soviet Union's January 15th proposal. The Parliamentary Labour Party has also reacted positively, calling for a new campaign for Labour Party and trade union peace policy, which includes the removal of US nuclear bases from Britain and the cancellation of the Trident missile program. And even the leader of the Social Democratic Party has urged that Britain ceases its nuclear tests in Nevada. Our party while advocating unilateral nuclear disarmament by Britain, campaigns for Britain to join the test moratorium for the resumption of talks on a comprehensive test ban treaty and for bilateral discussions between Britain and the Soviet Union on measures of nuclear disarmament. We also urge British withdrawal from NATO and the mutual dissolution of NATO and the Warsaw Pact though we recognize that this is not an immediate campaigning issue for the broad peace movement. <laughs> we stand firmly for the principles of non-intervention, respect for the independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of states, and non-use of force in international relations. The Communist parties throughout the world are a powerful component of the anti-imperialist forces. Independence and sovereignty of each Communist Party is the essential basis for relations between parties, vital to the principles of internationalism and to their mutual solidarity. Differences can and do exist on some questions, but these need not be a barrier to cooperation and good comradely relations. We will continue to express our views while conducting militant struggle with communist parties and liberation movements in line with the proud international tradition and record of our party. Britain today is in deep crisis. Over four million workers, including many young people, are unemployed. 
manufacturing industry declines, and publicly owned sectors of industry and services are sold off to Britain, British and American multinational corporations. Fifteen million people live in poverty, while social and public services are destroyed. The ten million strong trade union movement is under fierce attack from employers using punitive anti-trade union legislation introduced by the Thatcher government. Black people are especially discriminated against and the completely justified demands vital for women's liberation are rejected. The government refuses to take decisive steps including economic sanctions to help end the evil system of apartheid in South Africa and its policies encourage the development of racism within Britain. It also continues its repression in Northern Ireland and resists the demand that it should renounce all claims to Irish territory and recognise the right of the Irish people to decide their own future. But social and political forces exist that, if united, can change the policies of the present government in which significant divisions have recently emerged. The challenge to communists and the left is to help develop a broad democratic alliance of struggle led by the working class on all the great issues and win the return of the Labour government back, implementing left policies could take Britain on a new course. This is also necessary for realising the long-term perspective set out in our programme, The British Road to Socialism, which describes how the working class and its allies can take political, economic and state power out of the hands of the capitalist class. Our aim is the construction of socialism in Britain in which there would be plurality of political parties, the right to express different political interests and views, the independence of the trade unions from the state, freedom of religious worship and propaganda, and freedom of research, cultural, artistic and scientific activities. Our delegation thanks the Central Committee for the opportunity to be present at this Congress. We will your government and the entire Soviet people complete success in tackling the task set out in Comrade Gorbachev's report, which will represent new advances for the Soviet people and for all humanity. Let us and all communist parties act together in unity for our common objectives, peace, democracy, national liberation, and socialism. Thank you, comrades.